I'm Ter Dr. Terry McCurdy. I work at McMaster University and I teach the nutrition course for the nursing students. And I am Kylie White and I work at Conestoga College. I'm a registered dietitian and I teach in food and nutrition. We are collaborating to bring you some videos to increase your cooking skills since the research shows that cooking your own food can actually increase your health and we're hoping to show you some vegetarian dishes because of the benefits there. Mm -hmm. What else? Yeah, do you uh, we're trying to keep it budget friendly and we are trying to keep everything in season so that it's a little bit easier on your wallets. Um, we're also showing you nice simple recipes so that uh, they're not too difficult for you to make on your own at home. And we do a lot of batch cooking as well, Dr. McCurdy and I, because we like having leftovers that you can just pop into individual containers in the fridge or freezer and have for later on. So we'll be making a, a bigger amount today, but that's so that we have our lunches for tomorrow. Yes, because we get to have this afterwards and then we both have our lunch for tomorrow. So we're gonna get started with the very first recipe. We've chosen Ellie Krieger's roasted tomato and garlic and white bean pasta. And the reason we chose that is because it is a vegetarian dish and we have our protein in the form of beans and we also have protein in our grains and these two complement each other so they have a full uh, profile of amino acids the same as you would get in a meat. Mm -hmm. All right, so should we get started, Dr. Curdy? Yes, Curdy? We'll start and with... you can find this recipe online. Uh, if you type in Ellie Krieger and white bean roasted mm -hmm. tomato, it's actually called penne with roasted tomatoes, garlic, and white beans. We've also changed things up a little bit. Mm -hmm. We like more veggies in our pasta, and we decided that we are going to put spinach in as well because of the nutritional benefits that we'll talk about. And I was at my neighborhood basics where they had this on sale for 288 this whole big thing mm -hmm. and the beans were on sale for 88 cents a can so as kylie mentioned this is very budget friendly and should be really easy for you to prepare yeah it's a great recipe we have modified the recipe a little bit like dr mccurdy said um and that's something that you can do as you become more comfortable with cooking if you want to start out following it exactly and measuring everything you'll notice that when we do things with the oils um, we tend to both just drizzle uh, but if you're watching your weight and um, watching your caloric intake, you should be making sure that you're measuring, especially with your higher calorie ingredients. Like Which that. are the oils, that's right. Yeah. So Kylie's going to start yeah. with the tomatoes and they're roasted. The recipe actually says, I believe it says olive oil. Mm -hmm. We're going to use canola because it has a higher smoke point. So your olive oils are better for lower temperature so I'm going to use this to cook the spinach and we're also going to use it for a salad dressing because with our pasta it's a great idea to have a side salad so you get more nutrition we want to maximize mm -hmm. the nutritional value of the meal that we're making so Kylie's going to go with the canola oil yep. with a smoke point of 400 I believe we said yeah this one is lower what did we say 320 Three, I think it's 320 to 350 depending on the type of olive oil that's you're right using. because you can have extra virgin yep. virgin or uh, you know, the, the ones that are later pressed. Yes. So while Kylie does those tomatoes, I'm going to come over here and I've got a cast iron frying pan that I've chosen to use and I'll just drizzle a little olive oil in there because cast iron can also transfer the iron to your food. And of course we've got spinach, which is very rich in iron. And when we cook spinach, the iron becomes more bioavailable. So it's easier for you to absorb since this is the non-heme form. You have the heme form mm -hmm. in meat. So we've got the olive oil heating up just a little bit and we're gonna just wilt the spinach. So just pop it in there until it's wilted and then we're gonna throw it into the pasta later. And as I mentioned, more bioavailable the iron is when we've got the, uh, when we cook it, and also we're adding to the iron along with that because we're cooking it in cast iron. And iron is one of our important ingredients right now with our vegetarian recipes because that's something that we usually in Canada, we usually get our iron from meats. And since we're showing you these vegetarian options in these recipes, we like to be focusing on the nutrients of concern that we would see in meats and iron's one of those. So that's why we're focusing on that today. 
The other thing with that iron and spinach, the iron in our plant foods, like Dr. McCurdy said, is a little bit less bioavailable. And this recipe is great because it also has a lot of vitamin C in it from the tomatoes as well as the lemon that you'll see a little bit later. And that vitamin C in these vegetables brings out the uh, bioavailability and the ability of our bodies to absorb that iron from our plant foods. So that'll increase that as well. And since I teach a lot of female students that in that younger age category, we find that there uh, sometimes is difficulty in getting the amount of iron that they need. So this is also a great thing to do when you're making the pasta is bump up the iron content by adding something like spinach that isn't called for in this recipe, but we really like it, so we decided yes. to throw it in. So also, while I'm just cutting, cutting up these tomatoes here, um, you'll notice that if you look at the recipe on the website, uh, that it only calls for one type of tomatoes, and you can actually use whatever type you like. So we have a couple different types here. We have some of our littler cherry tomatoes as well as our plum tomatoes. Um, and I'm just cutting up these plum tomatoes, and we're gonna throw these cherry grape tomatoes in with them as well when we're roasting. One of the uh, great nutrients in our tomatoes is lycopene. And something that's important to remember with tomatoes is that that lycopene actually becomes more bioavailable to our bodies when we roast or heat the tomatoes. So we're roasting these tomatoes, therefore making it more bioavailable to, bioavailable to us, um, which is important because lycopene can be beneficial for your health. It can help decrease uh, rates of cancer. It can help decrease inflammation. So it's one of our great nutrients. It's one of those antioxidants that yes. we always talk about in our biochemistry class. Now, while Kylie's putting that together, I'm going to put the pasta on and cook that while we're uh, wilting our spinach. I have a couple different kinds of pasta here. I know a lot of people tend to go for the white one. And white pasta is okay, but if you look at the nutrient profile, We've got uh, per 85 gram serving, we only have three grams of fiber. And fiber is one of those things that in the Western diet, people don't usually get enough of. So we like to maximize that. And if you like white pasta, one of the things that you can do before you get into the whole grain pastas is go for something like this white pasta with added fiber. Now this, usually it's inulin. I didn't check the ingredient on here. Chicory root inulin. So that's the fiber that's added. And so it looks like white pasta, but it has a nutritional profile closer to the whole wheat. There are uh, eight grams of fiber in a, an 85 gram serving. And then we have our whole wheat pasta, which I tend to prefer, and I think you do too, mm -hmm. Kylie, don't you? I do. Again, this one has about the same, eight grams of fiber, but actually in 75 grams. So it's a little bit higher in fiber. This is the one we're gonna use. The first batch that we made, we used the white pasta with the added fiber. So I'm going to dump this in once I've got my water boiling. I don't add any salt to my water and Kylie said she doesn't as nope. well. You don't really need it. I know a lot of people do it, but a lot of people are sodium conscious now. It's not great to have tons of sodium. Uh, the nutritional uh, recommendations have gone up a little bit because they're not recommending that you hold it down as low as you used to, but it's still something to watch out for. You don't want anything with really high sodium value. So of we're course. just going to pop this in to boil without any added salt. And I'm just peeling some uh, garlic a little bit here. We're keeping a lot of the paper on the garlic because we're also roasting it with our tomatoes. And we like to roast it with some of the paper on to protect that inside part. Uh, the recipe I think calls for six cloves of garlic and um, we've already roasted some for our other batch there. So these ones are pretty big, so I think I'm just gonna use six cloves, but sometimes Dr. McCurdy and I like garlic a little bit too much, so we put a little bit of extra in. It has lots of nutritional benefits as well, so that's one of the things that I cook with a lot, and I'm sure you do as well. I do. And if you don't like the flavor of raw garlic, the roasting really mellows it out, and it doesn't really destroy the nutritional profile, so it's nice to have. And uh, one of the things we're going to do later is make some salad dressing, and we've roasted an extra clove for that because in that particular recipe for the dressing, I find that the fresh garlic is a little bit harsh. So I, I thought it'd be great to put roasted garlic in that one as well. Yes, and so I'm just drizzling the canola oil onto our vegetables here, our tomatoes and our garlic. 
I'm just going to give them a little toss and then we're going to sprinkle them with a little bit of pepper. Um, we're not putting any salt on the on the vegetables that we're going to roast as well. Um, we both tend to not like things super salty anyways and we're already getting a little bit of sodium from some of the beans that we're using. So we're trying to keep it a little bit lower as well as our Parmesan cheese has got a little bit of sodium in it. Mm -hmm. And here I can show you that we've got the spinach wilted and that's all finished. That's all you need to do is just a little bit of olive oil and stir it around until it cooks down like this. And that's one of the things about spinach is that it really cooks down. So you can probably cook this whole thing and not have too much. No, and that's an important thing too. This ten, People tend to buy this and they always say to me, oh Kylie, I, I don't know how to get through my spinach before it goes bad. Uh, it always starts to go bad quickly. And I always tell them, you know, if you buy one of these and it's going bad before you get through it, you're probably not eating enough leafy greens because one person should be able to get through one of these in probably three to four days. Uh, if you're having trouble, roasting it is a great way to really shrink it down. And if it's starting to go, it's a great way to keep it. Mm -hmm. uh, you can also freeze it if it's starting to go to use in things like smoothies or soups later on so that it'll keep nice and, and fresh for you at a later date. Mm -hmm. That's a great thing to do is have things ready for smoothies because if you're looking for a, a quick breakfast on the way out, a smoothie is a good one. Uh, beans are the other thing that's going in here, so maybe we'll talk about the beans while you're sure. finishing that off. I've got two different types here. It calls for white beans. This is the one I got on sale yesterday. This is the blue menu product that Fortino's and Zares has. And if you look at the difference between them, this one has much less sodium. So we've only got 10 grams of sodium in a serving here, which is one cup. In this one, it's not as low sodium. It's 350 milligrams, but still not too bad and we're going to rinse these beans so you're going to lose a lot of the sodium anyways i'm not sure exactly how much gets lost but rinsing beans is always a good idea because that way you get to and apparently you don't get as much gas from them if you exactly. if you rinse them as well so that's the other good reason to rinse them perfect um are beans another great thing about them are they uh, a really great source of protein as we mentioned before and high in iron as well um and the best part about these is if you're a budget conscious person you can get a can of beans on sale for yeah, these 75 ones, think, cents a dollar uh, yeah, quite I got regularly some 88 cents yesterday and yeah. some for 79 cents so that's one of the staples you should keep in your pantry and oh, that nice. way instead of going out and buying fast food that's probably not as nutritious. If you have a few white bean, black bean, pinto beans in your cupboard, then you've got the beginnings for a lot of different meals. You do, you can add them to anything, salads, soups, pasta dishes. Uh, they're quick, they're easy, and they're such a delicious and nutritious thing. If you aren't somebody who eats a lot of beans to begin with, you might notice that the first time you try incorporating them into your diet, you get a lot of gas um, and it's uncomfortable and you get bloated. But the good news is your body actually gets used to that. So start a little bit more slowly. Don't incorporate a whole bunch of beans at once. Start a little bit more slowly, a little bit a day, uh, and your body will get used to the gas and eventually you can have a whole bunch of beans at any one time. Mm -hmm. That's one of the principles they've been talking about a lot lately is retraining your taste buds. So that applies to this kind of thing with going from the white pasta to the whole wheat pasta some people that's why I mentioned you might want to do the in-between with the white to get yourself used to the higher fiber ones and don't forget to increase your fluid intake if you're bumping up your fiber as well always keeps help. things moving all right how's our pasta doing Dr. McCurdy it's doing pretty well what we want to do with this recipe it's really easy because you don't have to cook the beans we're going to open this can of beans we're going to put it in our strainer that's already in the sink and then we're going to pour the pasta water over top and that's all you have to do. You don't have to cook the beans, you're just warming them with the pasta water. Uh, and as I mentioned, that's going to rinse out a lot of the sodium in these beans. The other blue menu ones that we've used in the previous batch are, uh, are already low in sodium so it's not as important to rinse them as thoroughly but it can't hurt to, as I mentioned, get rid of some of the kind of gelatinous stuff in the can that uh, tends to be what the, uh, the, the other thing with our pasta that we're doing is we're cooking it to be a little bit more firm. So we're cooking our pasta to be what we call al dente. And the important thing with that is 
cooking it so it's a little bit more firm and less mushy slows the absorption of that carbohydrate in your body. So it makes it a lower glycemic index and therefore prevents your blood sugar from spiking as high. Because as you know, pasta is one of those carbohydrate rich foods. And if you have it really mushy, it has a higher glycemic index and therefore causes greater increases in your blood sugar. So we're cooking it so it's a little bit more firm. So that's why we keep testing it here and mixing it around just to see our texture. We want it that nice al dente. And it does take a little longer. That's one thing you'll find with the whole wheat pasta. It takes a little longer to cook. But we can always put things together. Uh, we already did our first batch. So we can put it together and we can get going on our salad while the second batch is cooking. Yeah, oh, or we basil. Forgot all the other we ingredients. also maybe have some bread in the oven that uh, may need to come out shortly. Oh, right. Well, That's I just for that. uh, a little added little benefit uh, for our meal to make it a little bit more complete. We like to have a little slice of bread with it. Uh, and our uh, delicious salad, which we are going to throw together. Um, so we have lots of different greens. We have some spinach as well as some arugula that we're going to put together. Uh, like I mentioned before, having your leafy greens every day is really important. That dark green vegetable Sorry. is one of the ones that Health Canada recommends every day. Dark green as well as dark orange um, are, are the colors that you should be making sure you get so you get all of your nutrients. And with these, you can use any combination of greens you want. In the summer, my husband grows kale in the garden, spinach, beet greens. So I love the summertime because we have our fresh greens. In the wintertime, you can usually find these on sale. Like I said, I went to Basics yesterday. It was $2.88 for each of these. So I decided to get both, and we'll do a little combo platter and uh, increase our nutritional bang for our buck. And luckily we bought the ones that are pre-washed so we don't have to fool around very much. And that's one of the nice things about buying spinach versus something like lettuce where you have to wash it. Yeah. And like we said, whatever leafy greens you have on hand are perfect because they're all nice and nutritious and nutrient dense. And uh, we got these on sale, so they're a great price. Mm -hmm. okay. Now, uh, when you're throwing together a salad, you can put just about anything in it. I quite like seeds and nuts so because I make my own granola as well I always have pumpkin seeds and ses or sunflower seeds that's the word I'm looking for and we just toasted some almonds up a little bit earlier so we have some nice roasted almonds to go on top and some dried cherries just yes my favorite flavor. is cherries so being a Costco shopper I have lots of them on hand all the time mm -hmm. so fruit and nuts is my favorite combination on fresh greens and for a little mm -hmm. bit of extra flavor and yumminess, we've got some goat cheese. And you don't have to have a lot of goat cheese on there because it is fairly high thing. in calories, but it is going to really bump up the flavor profile. So mm -hmm. if you just throw a little bit on there, it'll make it much tastier. The other thing we're going to show you with this salad is we're going to make our own dressing. And making your own salad dressings uh, from scratch, not only are they super easy to do, but they're also very, very delicious. Uh, I don't think either... And economical. And economical, very economical. And I don't think either uh, Dr. McCurdy or myself um, even buy store-bought salad dressing anymore because anymore. we just love the taste of our homemade, one, homemade ones so much that um, we don't even see the need. And I'm going to pull this one over here and put it together. This one I love. It's from Leslie Beck. It was actually in the Food and Drink magazine a few years ago. And I love it because I can always remember. It's three, two, one. Three tablespoons of olive oil, two tablespoons of balsamic vinegar, one tablespoon of honey. So three, two, one. And then one and a half teaspoons of grainy Dijon mustard. And we've got our, it calls for fresh garlic. I thought that it would be nicer to have a clove of roasted garlic because that'll mellow out the flavor a little bit. So I think I'll squish that in there first. And we then love roasted garlic. Green. Yes, we've roasted much of it today. So <laughs> It actually smells wonderful in here right now. It smells like the roasted garlic, so it's delicious. Our pasta needs a little bit longer still, still not quite done. I think I might, this one is a little crunchy, so I think we might even have to chop it up a little bit. Mm -hmm. So you have to go with whatever. With got. roasting vegetables, that's one of the greatest things about them. You can't really over roast them too much. 
So um, with this recipe, it says to roast your tomatoes and garlic for about 30 to 40 minutes. But if you accidentally forget them for an additional 10 minutes, it's really not going to harm anything. Um, as long as they're not black, yeah, then we're good. Might make your garlic a little bit crispy, uh, depending on it, having a little bit of crunchy bits. But you can always pick those off if you don't like them or chop it up and mush it together. Mm -hmm. So that's what I've done in here. And then we're going to do our 3, 2, 1. Mm -hmm. Where we get... I love this new olive oil we got. It has a spout already on it, so makes it pretty easy. So with your salad dressings for homemade ones, this is a great recipe with your three olive oil, two balsamic, and one of your uh, honey. But the, the most important thing to remember with homemade salad dressings is you can do it with pretty much anything. Uh, as long as you have an oil, as well as an acid or vinegar, and then some flavoring agents. So you can see here for our oil, we've chosen the olive oil. Our acid, we have our balsamic vinegar. Um, and then our flavoring agents, we have our honey, our grainy Dijon, and our roasted garlic. Um, other great recipes you can do uh, are anything with other vinegars. So great ones are um, apple cider vinegars, or um, we have a really great fig infused balsamic vinegar here as well. That's a nice one to try. Even things like orange juice or lemon juice are also great as acids. Flavoring agents you can use are things like honey, mustards, uh, Garlics, any spices and herbs, oregano um, is a really great one. Brown sugar, if you're going to go there. Um, maple syrup, maple even. syrup. I've got one that's maple syrup. And yeah. In the summer, when I have my herb garden, I love to throw rosemary in there or tarragon. Mm -hmm. They're all great to add. Um, with your with your sweeteners, uh, the important thing to remember is just to watch how much you have of them. Uh, any sweetener, so honey, maple sugar, maple sugar, maple syrup, brown sugar, white sugar, agave, anything like that, all of the sugars impact your body the same way. Um, all of those sweeteners, they're going to. They're yeah, going so don't to be fooled by the sugar. agave. They it's are really highly calorie processed. Calorie dense. Yeah, it's not any better yeah. for you than honey. They're not. So just with any of them, take your pick and just remember everything in moderation. So just limit them. And if you have mason jars, which I always have lots of because I do a lot of canning, then they are a great little salad maker. You don't need any special tools. And this dressing is super fantastic. And keeping it in the mason jar is a great way to keep it in the fridge. And I usually write the date on the top so that I don't keep it around too long. And then I'm good. All okay, right. I think we're almost ready to go here, aren't we? Excellent. Sure about this pasta. Because the we have we have to slice up our lemon still to make our um, pasta sauce almost. Uh, it's not a traditional sauce. It's just our lemons mixed with our roasted garlic. And we have one made up already here where we've just sort of mashed up the roasted garlic. We've taken it out of the peels, mashed it up, and mixed it with some fresh lemon juice. And that's your sauce that you toss over. It makes it nice and fresh, nice and light. It's not too heavy. Um, it's a great uh, flavoring for your pasta. A little bit less traditional. Mm -hmm. And there's not a lot of calories in any of the ingredients no. here, which is a, a nice thing. Oh, I've got the wrong lid. Oh, that's why that's they're not working. <laughs> so the other thing that, uh, in the summer, I always grow it, but basil is the other ingredient that you want here. And usually you can get it in these packages in the grocery store. So what you might want to do is take it out, rinse it off, and then just kind of roll it up in a tube and then slice it. And that's called a chiffonade, if you see that somewhere. We'll let term you demonstrate somewhere. that for us, Dr. McCurdy. And share that cutting basil. board with our lemon. Basil, the great thing about basil too is the scent. So we have some already chopped up here and I know you can't smell it over the camera, but it's so fragrant and fresh and it just makes everything taste that much fresher. So I love smelling it. It's almost like a, an air freshener once you chop it mm -hmm. up. So I can't and I have really... it growing in the other room. We have some already ready to go out in the garden. So you just want to kind of roll this up and watch your fingers. Mm -hmm. Just slice it thin, and that's called chiffonade. And then it's all ready to go into our pasta as a wonderful flavoring ingredient. It's also great if you uh, make pi pasta, or pizza, is the word yeah. I was looking for. 
pizza. It's nice to put it on under the cheese so it doesn't get too over roasted. And this one's got an awful lot of stems in it, so I think I'll just get rid of the stems. If you have any green space or any sunny space, like a balcony that gets a lot of sun or a little bit of a garden outside, your herbs are one of the easiest and um, most resilient things to grow, I find. Uh, you can't They're very worthwhile. worthwhile. Very worthwhile. You always have fresh herbs. Um, I know one of my favorites to grow is mint, so that I always have fresh mint. Uh, and you love to grow basil, and you grow a basil whole and bunch rosemary. Of rosemary, yes, delicious. Basil and rosemary are my favorites, mm -hmm. but I love to have a full herb garden. And then in the yep. summer, if I'm looking for a side dish to go with a nice barbecued salmon, it's great to just pull every different kind of herb. Chop them all up, throw them together with some pasta and olive oil, and you've got a lovely little side dish to go with your yeah. salmon that has not taken you very much effort. All right. I think we are almost ready here to throw mm. everything all together. I think our second round of pasta is ready here, so we're going to take that and drain it on top of the beans to warm them. Mm -hmm. Be careful not to get the steam in the face. And if you want to prevent it from sticking together, a little drizzle of olive oil will keep those uh, pasta noodles nice and separated so that they won't clump. And now we can assemble. Yeah. We've got all our ingredients here. We have our pasta with our beans already. Our uh, lemon juice and our garlic, as well as our fresh basil our nice sauteed spinach, and then we have our beautiful roasted tomatoes as well. So you can just add everything to a big bowl where it's all together and toss it all together. Okay, Get so those tomatoes in there. You wanna scrape off all the, there's not a lot of juice left, but you wanna scrape everything off there because it's very, very tasty. It is. And so good for you. It's so good for you, it's so delicious. I wish you could all smell it in here. It smells great right now. Okay, and then our basil. Mm -hmm. We also have our Parmesan cheese here. A uh, great thing about Parmesan cheese is it's nice and high in your calcium and your protein. And uh, it's also lactose free, which not a lot of people know. So even if you're lactose intolerant, you can have your Parmesan cheese and be just fine. And the great thing about Parmesan is it's so flavorful that you don't have to use a lot because mm -hmm. cheese is fairly high in calories and saturated fat, although we were just talking about the fact that uh, they're finding out it's not as big of a problem to have saturated fat from dairy products mm -hmm. as, say, your saturated fat from meats. Mm -hmm. It's not as, as bad for you. Garlic in here that's got a little bit of skin on it still. Yep, there we go. Okay, Oops. we'll get rid of that. <laughs> Don't know where that came from. And then our lemon and garlic, which is so super yummy. Yes, it's a nice little dressing sauce, whatever you want to call it. And look at this beautiful, colorful pasta. Kind of uh, Christmassy. Even. Kind of Christmassy, yeah. So we've got our spinach and our basil that give it the nice green. Mm -hmm. And because we're not cooking our basil, we're maximizing the nutritional value as well. Mm -hmm. Herbs have a lot of uh, good things in them. They do. Those green colors as well. Not quite the same as spinach, but it all adds up to lots of good antioxidants and and different colors are different nutrients, so that's why it's good to make sure you have nice, colorful plates when you're eating your uh, your meals throughout the day. So uh, this looks great. Let's just add our Parmesan cheese, and I think yes. we're all done. So easy, so simple, so quick. And usually I just dump it on, but I'll kind of measure it because you're not, you don't want to go too heavy on it. Yes. And it's nice to have some to pass at the table as well. So If anybody wants a little bit extra, they can put mm -hmm. that on at that time. And when you're packaging them up, I have my little... Ziploc containers, so whatever's left over, we're gonna pop in here, put it in the fridge, maybe with another sprinkle of this. Yeah. And then we've got a great lunch that doesn't cost us anything, so we don't have to stand in line for it. We don't have to worry about eating things that, you know, getting too hungry and eating things that are not as good for us because we're starving and pizza that's full of fat is standing right next to us. So okay. here we've got a great meal. We've got our pasta, we've got our greens, and we're good to go. And that's it. So thanks so much for watching, everyone, and we hope you we are hope you willing try to try this recipe. Give it a go. It's nice and easy, and you won't regret it. You'll love it.